Howdy banger pals, Blaine Smith joining you for another Overkill Reviews, and this time, hey, I'm back in the banger bar where we will be able to do some more shoots for the next couple months before the office moves. Regardless, let's get on to a topic near and dear to my heart. It's time to talk about metal and comedy. Yes, Death Clock are back with Death Album 4. It's out now on Water Tower Music. I'm gonna skip the whole pretend the fictional band is a real band gag that I'm sure a lot of reviewers will use here. Oh. God, that's pandering. Pandering! Death Clock is, of course, the creation of Brendan Small for his show Metal Ocalypse. Brendan Small is, of course, being a musician and comedian, Reed Mann, whose career I'm incredibly jealous of, um, is a creator of not one but two amazing shows in home movies and Metalocalypse, as well as frequent uh, voice actor, actor, comedian, musician, blah 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 blah. As one would expect with any piece of metal media, Metalocalypse, of course, had a very loyal fan base, but because it was metal-based, it was canceled. It managed to secure funding for uh, a proper conclusion for the show, and it was still canceled. But somehow, Brendan Small persevered, pushed through, and has brought Metalocalypse and Death Clock back for one final movie and album, which is, we're, talk we're, just, we're just talking about the album. We're not reviewing the movie, just, just the album. With it being a decade since the last Death Clock anything, my first listen did come with a bit of fear. Is there going to be an attempt to modernize this? Is there going to be an attempt to kind of reflect the modern state of death metal? Is there going to be some Lorna Shore nonsense going on? But thankfully, of course, Metalocalypse is a fictional universe where a melodic death metal band is the biggest thing in the world, so it can kind of ignore what's happening in the mainstream metal world. There's more atmospherics than before, and the production is sounding a lot more expensive. Uh, and surprisingly, I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just a, a less claustrophobic feel. There's more oxygen filling the room, and that is actually a good thing in this case, being that the highlight of the band is a virtuoso guitar player. Uh, I described the production almost in the same way I described like a, a reference pair of audiophile headphones. It's really kind of just letting the music and the players kind of m determine the sound. It's not really coloring in any way. The production is almost non-existent in its very professional existence. This is most noticeable on a track that you can draw a one-to-one -one comparison between this and Death Album 2 on in Mermaid or 3. Yes, thankfully they've brought back the Mermaid or series of songs for a third chapter. I'm really happy about that. And yeah, you can really hear how it still sounds like old Death Clock, but this is also new Death Clock. Have a listen. The decision for Gene Hoagland to be the series drummer has always been a masterstroke in that Gene is sort of an entity unto himself, kind of untethered from the various acts he's played with over the year, and also in that he's one of the greatest 
drummers of all time. Gene's a master at filling spaces with as many notes as possible, but never allowing things to become muddy or cluttered. The varying tempos and hits and speeds and paces that he uses help kind of prevent that wall of sound effect that can come in with a death metal drummer just blasting away for an entire song. The speed he's playing at on tracks like Bloodbath while still having every hit be distinct and clear is as much a testament to Gene's playing as it is also to the aforementioned production that really brings everything to the forefront. Uh, I especially love on Horse of Fire where essentially both him and Brandon are soloing at the same time and neither is overpowering each other. It's like a, a well-matched duel, which of course goes well with the, the, the theme content and all, all that. The albums always have been soundtracks for the show, but the show started as a comedy series with 11 and a half minute episodes that were largely massive metal mutilation sight gags. So if you just heard the first album without knowing it was connected to a series, you could assume this is just a humorous death metal band. Uh, as the show went on, it kind of has developed into more sci-fi fantasy epic with a lot of humor, and I like that direction. But as a result, this album can sound a bit more like it's supposed to be paired with something than a completely standalone product. That isn't necessarily a bad thing as it could create a strong emotional connection. If you really enjoy the movie, you're likely going to enjoy the album more. Uh, what it just does for me though, is it lets me know I'm not gonna enjoy the album as much as Death Album 2, which is a record that I can put on today and kind of just listen to musically completely on its own. The upside to this being a soundtrack is that every song is kind of essential to being on here. It's pretty standard when I'm doing reviews that I get an old knife and start cutting songs out of there saying remove X or Y or Z and this would be a tighter, faster, better album. It would just be superior in every way. Here, you can't really lose any of the songs. They're all very intentional, very well thought out, even if some are inevitably just gonna be better than others. Because if a song is on this album, it's because there's something happening in a movie to go along with it and it's advancing a plot. There's not a song on here that's on here because no one has the guts to tell Metallica that nobody needs 70 goddamn seven minutes of music from them. A song like Satellite Bleeding doesn't jump out as much as Gardener of Vengeance because it sounds like it's supposed to be complimenting something because it is supposed to be complimenting something rather than the record label said we need 44 minutes of material and I guess we can use this song that we didn't put on the last record. I intentionally wanted to review this without seeing the movie because I thought that would give me a good idea of how I'd feel about the album in a couple of years. If you do want to see me review the album though, I'm I'm tossing a review up on the, uh, the old Patreon because we have a Patreon campaign. You can support us, give us a couple bucks, allow us to keep making this content and not advertise Squarespace to you. Um, not that there's anything wrong with Squarespace. Head on over to the Patreon. Uh, next week, there'll be a review up for the movie and you know, maybe a little addendum on how I feel about the album. I remember songs from Death Album 2 more than I remember episodes from season two. Not as a knock against the series, just because it's been a long time and music tends to stick in your brain longer. Uh, Death Album 4 is a strong album, but it does have a bit more of a companion piece feel, as I've said. It is really good, and I do really look forward to the movie after listening to it more than I already was, because with the album being this good, it, it just sounds like the movie's gonna be good, which is a great sign for what is hopefully a fantastic wrap up for what I believe to be the strongest piece of metal multimedia ever made. So, with all that said, I'm giving it 
three and a half out of five Deathclock band member skulls. But of course, I still have shout outs for you. I got three shout outs that all kind of tie in well with Death Clock. The first shout out is if you would like more death metal this week, uh, I talked about them in Metal Monthly, but I really need to reiterate again, the best death metal album coming out this week is absolutely gonna be Celestial Sanctuary's Insatiable Thirst for Torment on Church Road Records. I uh, love the band, they're great guys. Absolutely no reason for you to not buy that if you're a death metal fan. If you want a band that is both a great band and kind of funny and fun. Knife is releasing Heaven in the Dust on Napalm. Knife, the band that released an album called Knife with a song called Can IFE on it. So you're well in hand comedy wise over there. And if you'd like a album that ties together with animation, although completely unofficially, uh, Japanese uh, Gundam D-beat punk band Colony Drop is releasing their next record called Warmongers on Motor Chaos Records. So that's come out as well. So hey, if you want something to listen to with an animated series, this one, like I said, a little less official. Uh, Bandai Namco's not signing off on it, but I am. And I'm signing off on that record, and I'm also signing off from this review. Uh, thanks for coming out. What did you think? Uh, how did you feel about the movie? I'll read your comments after I'm done watching it and let you know what I thought, and we can chat about the movie, chat about the album down in the comments below. Thanks, gang. See you on the next one.